If you have been homeschooling for any amount of time, honestly, if you've ever just even probably looked up homeschooling, you have likely run into the idea of a morning basket. It has become a very, very popular thing. So today I'm going to share with you a little bit about what a morning basket is, but then I'm also gonna share with you what is in our basket. All right, so before we get into that, I wanna mention two things. The first thing is that I have started a free Facebook group um, I will put the link down below in the description box. So if you are a current homeschool mom, if you're just really interested in homeschooling and think that it's the path that you wanna go, then join this group. It is meant to be a place for community, for sharing. Um, we're gonna do some really fun challenges in there and it's going to be sort of all things homeschooling. It's the easiest way for me to kind of get everybody together in a group setting. I know I have benefited so much from the community over the years, especially as the world has changed and sometimes lockdowns and things like that where you can't get out and meet with community. And even if you do have an in-person homeschool group, maybe you can't meet with them you know, because of restrictions or whatever. So this is a great place to be online, um, to meet other homeschooling moms uh, who are in the trenches with you and can relate to what you're going through and we can just encourage each other and support each other. It's going to be fantastic. So I will put the link to that down below. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that if you are new to homeschooling, I know there's a lot of people that have jumped out of the school system, out of the public school system, out of the private school system to begin homeschooling this year for whatever reason, whether it's you're worried about your kid getting sick at school, you don't like the restrictions or the mask rules at school. There's so many different reasons, but homeschooling has seen a massive jump this year. Massive. I, of course, love that because as someone who's homeschooled for 10 years, I love homeschooling. I think that it can be a great fit for so many families. So I love seeing more people come aboard the homeschooling train. So I have created a quick start guide and it's totally free. I will link that down below as well. And that is meant to be a guide just to really help you if you are someone who has made that decision. Now you feel overwhelmed. You have no idea where to look, no idea where to start. How do you do this? What are the laws? All of that. This is a quick start guide uh, where I'm just gonna take you by the hand and walk you through the sort of main steps, the things that you need to know right away um, to get you and your children homeschooling as soon as today if you want to. So that will be down in the description box as well. And now let us chat about a morning basket. All right, so morning baskets were sort of created by Pam Barnhill. She is an OG homeschool mom, and she just has so much wisdom and knowledge to share. I will, of course, link her blog um, and her YouTube channel and all of that, but she's sort of the mastermind of the morning basket. And what she says, and I'm quoting her here, what she says about a morning basket is that, a morning basket is a time in the day when everyone in the family can come together and learn together about specific subjects. All ages can homeschool together, doing activities like reading aloud, studying the arts, or even efficiently combining students for subjects like history and science. Other names that you might hear it called are morning time, circle time, and some people even get a little fancy with their names. They call it things like symposium or power hour. It doesn't matter what you call it, the practice is still the same. Everyone's coming together, everyone's learning together, all at the same time. All right, so straight out of the horse's mouth, that is sort of the idea behind a morning basket. And for us, the reason that we choose to use one is mostly for efficiency. Um, there's many, many benefits and many reasons that we enjoy it, but efficiency is one of those things. When you, I have eight children, I'm homeschooling five of them currently, high school all the way down to second grade. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember the grade levels because, you know, we're not like super strict about those. If you have subjects that can be learned um, in a group setting across multiple ages, it kind of really does bring you back to the old one room schoolhouse vibe where you have kids of all ages learning together. And I think there's something really special about that. I think it mimics reality of life really well. You're never gonna go into hardly ever, I mean, I can't even really think of one, a job where everyone's going to be your exact same age um, it's very common to work with people of all ages, um, all backgrounds, all walks of life. 
And the other way that um, she mentions using them, which is another way that we do as well, is to allow us to get things into our homeschool that I do not really have time for as a separate subject or to put on the actual homeschool schedule, right? Let's say you want to include more poetry reading or you want to do a little bit of art studies, but you don't want to do a whole class on artists or composers. You don't want to do a whole um, unit on that you can break that down and just add it into your morning basket. So it's something that you're touching on, uh, but you're not focusing on as a subject. It's just something you're kind of pulling out of interest. And also it's a really great way to see if your kid's interest is peaked in a certain subject area. We use it as she kind of outlines on her website for us, what I pull out of it and we use it for relationship building, um, between myself and our kids, between my kids to each other. We also use it as somewhat of a ritual. For me, that's really more of like what I would call like a rhythm. It's just something that I think helps to give our kids a predictable way that we're starting off the day. And it allows us to ease into our homeschool day instead of sitting down at the desk with monsters still in your eyes, as my four-year-old says, I call them eye boogers, but she calls them monsters. So sitting down at the desk with monsters still in your eyes and slapping a math book in front of you. Oy, I, I can't handle that. So it's a really great way to slowly kind of ease everybody in, pull everybody out of their morning shell and get them in, get their brains firing, you know, before they start, you know, the more vigorous schoolwork. It's also another really great time to include read alouds. So let's just say you've got a list of read alouds that you want to read with your kids this year, but they don't fit in with your history or your science or anything like that. Um, this is just a great place to plop in books, good, good books that you want to read, you know, classics or exciting books or, or adventure, but whatever it is that you want to be reading to your kids, this is a great time to pop a read aloud book into your morning basket, read for 20 minutes. You can just keep moving through those lists of books that you really want to get through with your kids, but maybe don't fit anywhere else. All right, now let me jump in and show you guys what is in our morning basket this year. I normally have like a really pretty basket for my morning basket, but this is what I had out here. So this is what I'm going to stick with for right now, but I'll get my pretty basket out when I take it inside and put it in our um, playroom living room area. I've already explained to you sort of our goals for our morning basket, what we would like for it to achieve for our family. And so now I'm just gonna go through and show you what's in here. So first thing is this book that I shared about a little while ago called Sing a Song of Seasons, a nature poem for each day of the year. This is an absolutely beautiful book. I just think it's a fantastic habit to get into reading one beautiful little nature poem in the morning before we get started. We've also got a Bible here, a kid's Bible that's uh, for reference for the kids. So there's two kind of real meaty things that we're doing in our morning basket that will incorporate all of my children, all eight of them from preschool on up into my high schooler. And then something that is optional for my older kids as well as my super young ones that aren't actually of school age yet. So. The first thing is we're gonna be working through this To Every Nation, a study of 12 missionaries and their gods. This I got from Not Consumed Ministries. Um, and basically you're reading one of these Christian heroes then and now books. We are rebels, so we're not going in the order they're in. We're starting with Corey Ten Boom. Um, so I will be reading aloud from this for roughly 20 minutes every morning. We've got the student notebooks that go with it with some little activities. Again, I am not a stickler for like, we must do everything. We must do every activity as it is listed. We go with the flow. We do what feels right. I'm not, uh, my personal type of homeschool is not one that includes like, we must cook everything. We must craft everything. We must do everything that's, that's an option to do. Um, because some days I just don't have time or energy to do that. Now, as you heard me say, we will have lots of, children in the room for this. And so the other thing I do is include my children's handwriting notebooks in our morning basket. So uh, we've used the Good and the Beautiful handwriting for years. My kids all really enjoy it. I've never had a lot of complaints about handwriting from my kids, so we stick with it. So I did get the doodles and pre-writing for littles for my four-year-olds. They just turned four at the very end of July. So I got that for them to work on. So right now school for them is just whatever they want to participate in and do. I have things for them, but they're not required to do it. Uh, then I obviously also have all the rest of my kids handwriting notebooks, except for my oldest, my high schooler. She does not have a handwriting notebook. So she will be allowed to 
doodle if she wants to or if she's got something else that she's working on for another class that she wants to kind of work on silently while I'm reading. The whole point is giving their little hand something to do so they're not expected to just sit completely still and silent while I read. I always like to have them something to do and this is easy because it doesn't require me to come up with anything, to pull out a project or you know have them coloring and fighting over colors or anything like that. They're just doing their handwriting. So we'll be doing the To Every Nation. Then we're also gonna be doing a family Bible study with one of the Not Consumed Ministries Bible studies. Uh, we are gonna be doing, I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I believe it is called Tame the Tongue. That again, will have everyone participating. Um, obviously minus like my preschoolers. They, they are always welcome to sit in and listen and doodle and draw. Uh, but I just don't, I don't have things that they're like required to do. So those things are pretty much standard for us. They are a part of our morning basket. We'll be rotating through the different missionary books um, and different Bible studies. And then the thing that is going to be sort of a monthly difference for us, uh, I created this uh, little cover sheet here for our morning notebook. And inside of it, I have three different sort of unit studies or project type things that I want to be doing with sort of my middle aged children. So the first one, I'm just gonna take it out of the binding, is called All About Me. So this has lessons in it on, you know, myself, where they take a mirror, they draw themselves, what they, you know, look like, hair color, eye color. There's another section for my family. Uh, then there's a section about my home, where they get to do a map of their house. There's like little furniture icons they can color and cut out. Um, my place in the world, showing their planet, the country, their city. So that I thought was interesting and my kids would enjoy. And that will probably take us, I would say two weeks probably of morning basket time. This is sort of a month's worth of additional materials for our morning basket. So then the next little unit that we're gonna do is an apple unit study. And I got all of these in a homeschool pack where you know, you pay like a price of $25 and every, it's a huge bundle. Um, so that's where I got these from. I'll link the websites in the shops below though, in case these are interesting to you. So this is an Apple unit study. We usually go Apple picking late September, early October. So I thought this would fit in well with that timeline. So it's just, uh, you know, anatomy of an Apple. There's Apple books and Apple edition and cute little worksheets like that. Just a fun way to incorporate some apple-y things in September. And then the last one, which I know my boys especially are going to absolutely love. Uh, this is, again, I've just pulled like these little units that I thought were interesting and would be interesting to my kids. And this is carnivorous plants. I know that they will really enjoy this. So it's got like a little carnivorous plant report that you can do, coloring, identifying, really honestly very beautiful very beautiful graphics and drawings all about the different types of carnivorous plants. A monkey cup, who knew? A butterwort. So yes, this is our morning time, our morning notebook. We'll be doing different units out of there. So yes, and then if we get through all of those units, depending on how long the All About Me one takes, I have a fourth option, which is continents and oceans, another little unit pack about that. And uh, if we get to that, otherwise we'll push that one to October. And I do plan to film like, you know, do morning time with us where I bring y'all in and kind of set you up in the corner um, and, and let you see kind of how we do morning time. It usually takes us about an hour to sort of get through our morning basket. Um, I am sipping coffee, sometimes breaking up little toddler fights and things like that. Um, it's not always peaceful and calm, but that is the goal, is that it be somewhat peaceful and calm. That's what's in our morning basket for September. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something about morning baskets. If you're totally new to them and thinking about trying it, I highly recommend. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. We would love to have you be a part of our homeschooling community. And if you are new to homeschooling and not sure where to start, don't forget to check out the quick start guide in the description box below. That is it for me today, y'all, and I will see you guys again very soon.